Hi, my name's Cole. I'm Ryan Kraus. And we are Paranormal Investigators. And this is Nice of the Dark. We are Paranormal Investigators, researching stories throughout Saskatchewan. You'll see exactly what we see. No sound effects, no scary music, and no video effects. If you're like us, and, and who isn't, <laughs> you like a good story, and you like a good ghost story. And uh, this one, it's not so much that we have much uh, in the way of a story, uh, in so much as we have some information that leads us to the investigation. Uh, this particular place has been off our radar forever, uh, researching some stuff in, uh, throughout Saskatchewan. Uh, brings us to Saskatoon, which we don't get to visit too often. No. I love Saskatoon, but it's not an Access 7 community. So we, we, don't, we come out here sparingly. But uh, if you're ever in the area, uh, there's a beautiful little cemetery. Uh, we're hoping it is because we haven't been inside yet, but uh, we're going to check it out. Ryan, what have you heard about this place? Uh, not a lot, like you said, uh, but people have seen um, mist floating around. Um, they've heard disembodied voices. Uh, eerie sounds, uh, which is enough to draw our attention and bring us to Smithville. Yeah, sounds like uh, sounds like my kind of uh, arcade amusement <laughs> palace or uh, retirement <laughs> yeah. home. Yeah. But uh, the interesting part of this is uh, as you're going down 22nd Street, uh, you just keep going uh, north, and it's like almost instant, instantly you cross a line where it becomes country. And uh, you go from like Walmart and uh, Shoppers Drug Mart to like, boom, cows and, uh, and dilapidated buildings. And um, you know, that, that beautiful open countryness. So we're not far, we could probably walk into town from here, but, uh, but there's nothing around here. Maybe about two, two houses in a, a mile or two radius. Yeah, but the traffic much. is insane, yeah. absolutely insane. There must be something going on there, but... Uh, yeah, it's that north to west traffic. <laughs> Man, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a one lane highway. It's not a major route, but it is insanely busy, which leads me to wonder how anybody would hear anything or feel anything with such close proximity to civilization, um, especially the noise. You, you must have to come here at like, you know, one or two in the morning. Yeah, which, which brings me to a point of we've been to places, for example, like the Kenora Bridge off on the side of the road where at two in the morning when we were there was just as loud as during the day because there's semis going by. So whatever it is that people are seeing or, or hearing, it's got to be pretty close because, yeah, it's going to be loud and, and we're going to have to take them to account when we're doing our EVP sessions and, and listening on later on in the, in the office. When you got uh, an area like this, you know, where you're dealing with farmland, so you've got animals, you've got machinery, and of course you got people, you know, not that far off. Uh, you've got uh, prairie land, which, uh, you know, the wind can really push a voice, you know, through uh, an area where there's no obstructions. Uh, you've got uh, wildlife, uh, specifically geese and birds this time of year. Farming is, uh, this is harvest time, yep. so it's it's busy out. And then once again, the traffic. So there's there's a lot of things working against you in a place like this to see, feel, or hear anything uh, abnormal, being surrounded by so many normal things. Uh, 
So, like, I think we, we'd have to experience something pretty dramatic. Yeah, at Smithville. <laughs> Saskatoon is uh, rife with a bunch of uh, paranormal activities and stories, but it's also rife with crime, violent crime. And um, it's something that, that the, our last investigation, we were either minutes away or a day away from uh, a robbery or a uh, people that were uh, actually in the cemetery hiding from a robbery, just like... Yeah, we went to three different places. All the three places afterwards, after we left, and the next day on the news, all reported crimes. It was like it was following us. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, bag. Uh, there's a paranormal event. Like, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, uh, he's at a, Smithville. <laughs> he's getting a head start on us. And uh, yeah. So when it comes to investigating stuff in Saskatoon or Regina, any major city, uh, be careful. Be careful out there because it's uh, often it's not the dead you have to worry about, it's the living. So um, when we come back here at night, we're just going to be mindful of making sure that, you know, there's nobody around. And, and, and this does seem like a, a, a fairly good location because people are just driving by, going somewhere in the country. This isn't, I don't think, a, a random, you know, drunken... Uh, no, no. I don't think drunk the cops rob, you know, they're looking to rob you or beat you up or anything. So I think yeah. uh, I think we'll be pretty good here. So um, yeah, when we go about our daylight uh, and nighttime investigations, tell them what we use, Ryan. We got an awesome selection of tools that we've been collecting over the years, and here they are. Check them out. Smithville Cemetery. Cool looking place. You can definitely tell from the space that either they really like spacing them out or maybe they had plans for a hall or something years ago or you know a small church and it just never happened. Yeah you know what this is uh, this is not a, as you can see a well um, uh, I shouldn't say I was gonna say well maintained it, it is well maintained. What I'm getting at is it's not a very new cemetery so um, it looks like it might be somewhat, uh, you know, out of favor. Right. I guess a lot, well, yeah, as you could see by some of the tombstones. Hmm. And, uh, the, yeah, these Different, are... Different, eh? Higher quality of Ireland. <clears throat> Died 1905. One year. Well, not, okay. This this person died in '95, so I, I guess it's a. Uh, it, it could be a little bit more like family related. 1906. So there are some more recent, and there's also some some older ones. 1906. Hmm. 1901. So definitely. Uh, it, it almost looks like some of these stones were remade, you know, as, as a memory, right. like to yep. keep, maybe, maybe they upkeep the grave, they put some graveyard, maybe they put some money towards it and, and redid some of the stones. Well, like, for instance, like, what's odd is, like, if you look at this one here, and you look at the headstone, right off the bat, I would say this, this looked like something from the 40s or 50s but it's not it's like 90s yeah it's like they don't match you would not think that this this would be from the 90s so they could be also you know uh they could be going for the classic classic look too right you know now here's one from uh 1955 now i'm not saying that it was uh oh here someone was uh, killed in france World War One, I, I bet. Nineteen seventeen. Oh, there. Hence the name Smith, right? Yeah, I noticed Smithville. So, 
So due to the, you know, the recent developments in Saskatoon, this was probably very much in the country as opposed to now. It's just sort of right at the beginning of the uh, openness. But uh, this is definitely not a built up area. Just three five. I'm uh, interested to see what this one here is, Ryan. Uh, it looks like uh, the shape of the Iron Cross. Looks. Uh, oh, down there. That's that's something you don't see every day. Oh, for sure not. For gallantry. I I don't know if this is um I don't know. I don't think this is a, a, a grave. Now this is uh, 40s and uh, 34. Well, oh, this one definitely has a, a look to it. How are you? How are you feeling? Do you have any? Do you have any feelings or? Hmm. Nothing, nothing particular, maybe a little bit this, this side of uh, disturbed. For no reason. You? Pretty calm, I was pretty calm. I haven't, uh, I haven't really had much negative vibes, not much positive vibes. Um, ironically enough, in the same area, I too, I also got a couple, not big spikes, but a couple small spikes in that corner, um, the same corner that you mentioned. And um, next to that, it's been, it's been pretty quiet on the, on the paranormal spectrum. <laughs> okay, well maybe uh, we should do a quick EVP here in the day and see if there's uh, anything that wants to communicate with us. Where's a likely location for you? In the corner here? Yeah, um, maybe you leave your camera there and I'm, I'll put mine somewhere facing this whole area. Okay, let's do that. In fact, I might leave mine here and join you in the corner.
Yeah, I find that odd that uh, we were getting some readings, especially as I started to feel, I think the word I used was disturbed, as I started coming towards this area. From, really? from over here. Pull up my EMF here. And making my way this way. Hmm. And when I when I use the word disturbed, that's just, just for lack of a of a more precise term. It's just where I would normally sit, right at my meter in the middle. You know, it's just a little bit left of center. Let's put it that way. So, so disturbed could mean the same as like, you know, having a little uh, shake in a glass of water, just uh, enough to disturb what is normally the calm. So. Um, Whatever that is, I, I don't know. Call, call it intuition or imagination. Or are the two, uh, are the two linked? Yeah, and especially with graveyards, so many times people have told us, you know, like I, I get messages all the time that, uh, you know, through the Nights of the Dark website where people send me messages and they're like, they're like, oh, you have to check out this place. I went there and I, I couldn't move for three minutes. Um, and, and, and it's, I'm, I'm not downplaying these or, you know, downplaying their psychological aspect, but, um, you know, I'll check them out on Facebook and see what they are, or like what kind of person they are. And they'll be your average Joe. Uh, and, and what I'm getting by that is you can, the most place you're going to expect to be haunted in is a graveyard. Why? Because that's not necessarily the case. It's maybe because that was how it always was in cartoons, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so when people come here, they're already expecting something to happen. So they'll like convince themselves something's going to happen and they'll make something happen before, you know, whether it's reality or not, they've, they've, you know, so they'll, they'll freeze in fear, but not actually have any excuse or reason as to why it's not that they're frozen. They've excited themselves to the point that they've become frozen That's and, right. and hopefully our equipment can prove or disprove some of the, um, the urban myths. Yeah, the idea of, uh, you know, a haunted cemetery is, uh, is as far, you know, that's, that, that is, it's classic, right? It's just, yeah, it, yeah. it's exactly what you think yeah. uh, in terms of, uh, it's a place that has dead bodies. And yeah. uh, other than that, you know, why would this place be, or, you know, why wouldn't the Dairy Queen be any scarier, <laughs> you know? Well, I've been through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, my point, exactly. Um, like, you know, like I always say, you don't see a ghost at the circus. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you kind of tie it back. Think of like the old 1930, 40 cartoons, whether it was Walt Disney, whether it was something else, you know, with the dancing skeletons and stuff like that, that black and white cartoons. And where they all stem from, they all come out of the graveyard. So that, that's been put into our minds for 50, 60 years, kind of like a generation. Oh, for, of for hundreds of you, thousands of years. Training you that you're already convinced that the graveyard's not a symbol of evil, nothing like that, but it's already a place where you're expecting something to happen. It's a place of it. mystery. That's we, right. We That's right. still don't know what happens after we pass on. Yeah. So the mystery will always be there. And uh, whether it's ever solved in our lifetime, well, it might be solved after your lifetime. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, and for sure, we've been to some graveyards where we had had uh, experiences. But we've also been to many where we have literally had nothing, you know, like the church bridge, for example, with, with the mist. We were there. We brought a witch with us. We all had a good time. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was and what it was. She did bring up a good point because, like, I, I mentioned to her that night about said, you know, most of these people that live here or uh, live here that are buried here <laughs> or the, the, the opposite of live here, <laughs> uh, they, um, this would not be a place that they would frequent. You know, you would think that a haunting, it would be a place where they lived, where they experienced life, uh, but not necessarily have to be attached to their body. And what she said was, don't forget too, it's also a place of grieving and sorrow where people have buried loved ones. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that, you know, got to take that into account. It kind sure of uh, slipped my mind. It's like, so there is that stigma to it as well so it is a place of uh could be a place of heartbreak and sorrow yeah. so you i longing. guess you, you form an attachment yeah the, right. okay so okay. then then there are people here that that may be buried here that that have grieved 
more than anything in their life over a loved one that was buried here. Okay, fair enough. So that, you know, that brings that brings a little bit more of a, if you can call it reasoning. Um, yes. But uh, it, it, it certainly uh, helps illustrate if your line of thinking falls into the category of uh, haunting, haunting a place that the living had already inhabited previously. Right, right. Okay, I've got like a five, six, and an eight, two, but could, yeah, uh, maybe it's from the vehicle. One point one seven, one oh five nine four seven zero four seven three five five eight seven zero one one oh five ninety four one oh five one oh five. Wow, that's insane numbers. That's a uh, that's we ha big haven't number. Even entered one two five. And four, and four. Is there a power line above me? If you look up. Hold on. Oh, sorry. One point two nine one oh five. Is there a power line up above us? I can't tell. I'm doing the audio right now. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Four um, seven eight two nine four. Whoa! What the heck? Yeah, there is. <laughs> is there really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Directly above you. Wow, that explains that. Wow. I was like, this is insane. Okay, well that's that's good to know, right? Oh, for sure. We'll have to. So, uh, so we, when we do an EVP session, we're not going to be anywhere near near the, near the entrance. Right. right. Okay, so uh, let's let's go inside. Let's let's see. You know, I mean, they those could... in a graveyard is creepy. What's that? The dance lights. Yeah, yeah. Those are I don't know, just just a weird thing to put in a graveyard, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's like they're going on the list. Seeing something with movement is, is not always uh, necessarily a pleasant experience when you're not expecting it, right? Watch out, there's a cross here. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I mean, maybe some people come here like on a Tuesday night at four in the morning, two in the morning, whatever, you know what I mean? Where there's a lot less traffic. Yeah. The only kind of people I know that do that is us. Yes. <laughs> it's it's not the biggest cemetery I've ever been in, but it it's a big space. It's bigger than I anticipated yeah. because this is not this is not like on the city grid. This is on the outskirts of town and just in the middle of it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, you right. know. It's a, you know a mile or two away from Walmart, but at the same time, it's uh, it's well hidden. Brace yourself for the results. I'm Smithville. Now, you've uh, spent an exhausting long time compiling the evidence, haven't you? This one, this one I did. Uh, it was actually, that was a really, really cool place to go to. That was super dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> was the whole CSI thing going on there. Tell me, <laughs> Professor. It's from some of those B-movies, you know, like uh, the you know, chiller horror theater. The weird thing is, is this is kind of actually the real life version of that. You know, <laughs> grow, growing up as a kid, you know, you watch these horror movies and there's always the scientist who's, you know, dramatically. Uh, and yet we're doing that now. Yeah, except he's the mad scientist. Now. Yes, <laughs> we're doing that for real. We're actually compiling evidence of, uh, yeah, sometimes I wonder. What are we doing? And it says in a show. It's not really a TV show if you take it in the context of entertainment per se. I mean, this is actually an investigation. It's as, this, this is what reality TV should be. This, this is as real as it gets. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's we go out. Well, you know, we tell you the whole story. We go out. Okay. We, we don't doctor anything up. We don't fake anything. We don't follow a script. <laughs> no, as you can tell. <laughs> Let's check it out. Like I said, uh, there's four files, and they're all based on the REM pod, So I love our creepy angles. Yeah, that's actually kind of like the favorite. <laughs> Here we go.
And that was Smithville. Well, you know, it's, that's... It's creepy. Like you said in a previous episode, you know, you want that thing to go off, but when it does, it sounds so creepy. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, in Smithville Cemetery, there's enough noise there to wake up the dead, and it sounds like it did. They're ringing the bell. <laughs>